Welcome back to The Dish. Ed DeRosa with the Paddock Prince here in the Louisville area ahead of, I dare say, David, the biggest weekend on the Derby Trail. We've obviously had some preps already. We've seen the likely favorite run, but with three races this weekend and all the points up for grabs, this is definitely going to form the field. This is where the rubber meets the road. Yeah, 100%. There's a bunch of wild cards. I know the one Memorial Field's not out yet, but I looked at the bluegrass field that just came out. You know, outside of Tappet Trice, there's a bunch of horses that have no points going forward. So there could be some new shooters making it to the Derby. And then the Wood Memorial, there's a chance, I think, there's a maidens. If, I guess Hitchell will probably be the favorite. But there's a couple maidens in there for Pletcher that could grab some points. So it's a, it's going to – could be some new shooters this weekend and knock out some people at the bottom of the list. Yeah, and, of course, uh, the Santa Anita Derby as well, which uh, for you and I, we'll look at your top ten first. Uh, but well represented – is the SoCal Trio uh, practical move you have right behind Forte? Go Rocket Ride, maybe a pace presence, and then Skinner, a horse I'm pretty interested in uh, since I have a future wager on him. But uh, that's a pretty deep field out there. Forte, though, you have number one. And I can't imagine anything that happens this weekend, even though you're two and three and four are running, would supplant Forte. Well, yeah, Forte had a good win last week, and obviously the figure didn't come back huge, but he got it done from a tough post. You didn't think he was going to win at the eighth pole, and he just he kind of blew by that horse and then was geared down at the wire. So, you know, he did what he had to do and won. I think if Tappet Trice, he's the interesting horse in my opinion because his last race he was lagging so far back. He drew post one in the bluegrass. I think he's one horse that can move up depending on how he runs and if he's more professional. And then I, I'm a big Skinner fan, but I – kind of worry about his jockey in terms of he I don't you know he just he's kind of wide in all his trips for no reason but sheriff said he's working extremely well I think he's a very talented horse and I think that race has three legit horses in it and we'll see what go rocket ride can do third time out probably be the pace setter yeah and to your point uh what you mentioned about the wood and bluegrass you only have one horse from each uh, that are in those fields, and I believe I do too, among at least my top 10, uh, and we agree on the two, Tapa, Trice, and Hit Show, both certainly going to be favored. Which one do you like more in their actual respective race? You have Tapa, Trice up higher. Hit Show may have an easier time of it, though. Probably so, but I think there's a horse in the um, Wood Memorial named Dreamlike who's getting blinkers on for Pletcher. He hasn't won yet, but he's ran two big figures Maybe just um, – I don't remember what hit show ran in the um, Withers, but I think Dreamlike's pretty close numbers-wise. So that race is going to be interesting between those two. If I had to pick a more likely winner in the race, I would probably pick hit show because of the way Tappet Trice was last time out. You can't lag like that at Keeneland, and he's got the one post. So hopefully he can break well somewhat and try to stay with intact of the field or he's going to have to drop back and go extremely wide. You know, look at that field in a moment. Did want to bring up my fair odds, which is how I rank the horses. And you and I right there on, on one, two, and three. I definitely, uh, Skinner is just definitely my sort of, you know, hoping uh, that some price in there could be better than the odds dictate since everyone knows about the top three. So he's kind of my KG thought. And the big, I would say the big jump up for me, uh, I think last week I had two fills around 40 to one, but it's pretty tough to ignore David that two of the horses he beat or excuse me, two of the horses he was in with uh, did come back and win, uh, including angel of empire who I also have 20 to one. So uh, th this feels really top heavy to me though. Yeah, I agree with you. I think uh, looking at your list on the fair odds, I think, Two fills seems like the wise guy horse, but now, well, before now, it seems like everybody's going to be on mage, for which I guess he didn't break well in the Florida Derby, but I'm not really a big fan of horses like that, so I'm not a big mage fan. I see you have him at 20 to 1 along with two fills. If we were betting by fair odds on yours, I would much rather have two fills at 20 to 1 compared to mage at 20 to 1. And then, you know, I think Kings Barn's still a wild card horse. He got such an easy trip in the Louisiana Derby, but. He is three for three. He can be tactical. It'll be interesting to see who Pratt chooses the ride. If Go Rocket Ride runs really well this weekend, because he'll have Angel of Empire, Go Rocket Ride, and Kings Barton's last time out. He had ridden all three of them. So it'll be interesting to see on the Jockey Roulette game who Pratt picks. Yeah, and, uh, and when he's forced to the flame, so to speak, I'm sure he'd like to wait 
as long as possible. Uh, we've certainly seen situations where horses get picked uh, and then they end up defecting and then that jockey's out, out of mount. So um, a lot of uh, musical chairs and gamesmanship for sure. Here is that bluegrass field. We've ref referenced it a few times. Uh, I love the consternation over Tappet Trice's rail post. By no means am I saying that's the most ideal post, but it, it just doesn't bother me. Uh, I thought that Tampa Bay Derby, which uh, certain figures maybe didn't come back too fast, but on Ragazzini looks great. He certainly looks faster than these. And from the rail, given his style, he, he just has to stay out of trouble, which with Luis Saez, who's won uh, this race before and worked hard to do it. I forget the name of the Chad Brown he had to run down uh, back in, what was that, twenty. Oh, you're talking about the, um, did he run down the, um, Clairvich horse? Must be, uh, it was a Chad Brown. I know that who I actually ended up picking to win the Derby something magic. No, no, I have to go back and look, but I agree with you on the one post. I wasn't saying it's bad for him. I just, I, I don't know. I don't know if he's, if he breaks really slowly and tardy, he's going to take a lot of dirt. But on the surface of things, I'm just looking at the field. I do think he is a very likely winner. I don't know if verifying really wants the distance. I saw that Cox said he's giving him one more try. Blazing Sevens was horrific in the Fountain of Youth. Um, raised Kane, I guess, won the Gotham, but that was a pace collapse. So there's a lot of horses in here that aren't really proven. And Tappet Trice found a way to get it done last time out on a track at Tampa that's hard to close at. Yeah, and I think if you really like that race, maybe there's an opportunity where Classic Car Wash – uh, sort of your other one underneath. I know Kenny really likes Mendelssohn's March. Uh, it, it's interesting after the top one. Blazing Sevens for me was just too bad to forgive last time. Yeah, I know he's getting blinkers on and Irad's riding, but man, he came back. He, I mean, he won his debut last year at Saratoga, so he had run Royal Fresh before, and Chad Brown's really good off layoffs. But he was just, I mean, he was abysmal in that race. Maybe he didn't like Gulfstream. I saw in an article that Chad said just toss that race. Like it never happened, but it's pretty hard to ignore when you look at it. But I mean, in this field, I wouldn't be shocked if he ran third or fourth. That is the field for the Bluegrass Stakes, and it was highly motivated. Was uh, that yeah, the Clairvich horse who beat? Yeah, him. who I was uh, trying to think of, and then I fell for him in the in the Derby, and he just wasn't wasn't a mountain quarter horse. I don't think he's a one turn horse. Oh, who well. beat him? Essential quality. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. So very similar. That, that's actually a good field. I'm I'm looking on the the uh, the bluegrass page on Horse Racing Nation, and they had a uh, Ron Bauer who went on to win the Preakness back mm -hmm. in training. He went third. Hidden, hidden stash. Keep me in mind. Uh, we're fourth and fifth, and they both they both won graded stakes uh, going forward. So not too bad of a group. No, I think too when you look at all these prep races, I think the San Anita Derby is by far the strongest field. Now that we've seen most of the, I mean, the Wood Memorial doesn't look like it's going to be great. There's a couple horses in there that can prove, but we've seen the Bluegrass field now. We've seen the Florida Derby and all that. I feel like the San Anita Derby is the field that has the most overall quality in it. And they got yeah. the Japanese horse running. That's right. Yeah, the uh, the wild card angle as well. So uh, great day of racing coming up Saturday. And I put up the crawl. Uh, why don't you let everyone know what's going on with the Paddock Prince? Yeah, we're back. I'm back in Naira full time. Turf racing starts Friday, so I'll be I do every day at Naira, and then Keeneland starts Friday. Got the meet packages for both, and looking forward to a fun 15 day meet at Keeneland. The opening day card is fantastic. Yeah, uh, 120 entries. I think I saw real quick on that two year old racing. What's your approach? Um, first off, I can't stand it this early in the year. <laughs> um, I usually look at the trainer first. I saw Ward has a horse, and I saw Mendez has a horse. And um, that was about all I needed to know. I know there's a couple other guys. Ennis, John, this is John Ennis, his trainer yeah. name. I think he wins a few. Um, Hancock wins some. But I usually look for a Ward horse and then a Mendez horse, and then I go from there. What about you? Yeah, I mean, it obviously starts with Ward. Uh, one thing I will say, and I need to update it because, uh, you know, maybe last year changed things. But going into 2022, uh, the rail is uh, – fantastic which i mean really is no big surprise i suppose because you kind of have that shoot into the turn but the amount of times even big prices are able to sort of hang on for second and third uh that is definitely a a key for me in wagering is i mean even if the ward has a rocket ship who's four to five 
sometimes the rail to me is enough. So 20, 30 to one horse in there, uh, pay attention to that. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it, it's just hard to ignore Ward. I mean, I hate to distill it down to that, but I don't think he had a huge year last year, though. No, he I think he, he was curtailed a little bit for sure. Yeah, I always um, I always play the jockey game with him too. I feel like when you use Rosario or Johnny V or someone along those lines, he means business. And Rosario is riding his horse, who is a, it's a homebred for Ward himself, actually. So it'll be interesting how that horse runs. I definitely think too. I've noticed. Uh, I mean, obviously the first week he wins as well, um, but. It does seem like now that Stone Street and a few others are willing to go on to Ascot with their horses, that um, some of the better ones, especially now that they run turf sprints for two-year-olds at Keeneland, that he's been holding them for later in the meet just because it times up better with Ascot. So, yeah. And to think about. for Belmont, too, because then you get the turf racing at Belmont. Yep. So, yeah, you know. Gulfstream has that new program this year. With the, I'm not sure if it's winning you're in, but something to do with Ascot. With How similar are the turf courses at Gulfstream and Ascot? Because <laughs> I was there Saturday. <laughs> some, and, of those, some of those paths were not turf courses. Turf, no. not turf. Well, they're off it for I, – I think they said they were going to be off it until those two-year-old races, so – Hopefully I think they'll they'll be doing it. I get a fresh coat of paint. But that's what they said last year. They were redoing it. And then True. They painted they it. So, all right. Well, Keeneland Friday, Aqueduct Thursday as well. Every day at Naira until Love December. It. One. All right. Beautiful. Bird well, racing is back. We will look forward to your picks, uh, wagering strategies as well. I uh, definitely hooked some people up with some decent pick five scores. So I'm hoping for more of the same this weekend. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Keeneland has really good pick five pulls. And you know what? They pay four out of five. So you may, if you don't win, if you don't win, you might get 25 bucks back. You might. Yep. I don't like it, but turn is turn, I suppose. So. Well, the early one at Gulfstream last weekend paid 70 bucks for four out of five, which is not really, if you think about it, it's not terrible. But the late one paid like $3. So it all sort of depends, too. If the, the leg you go out, you're single, it's like whoop de doo. Yeah. You get nothing. But when you're four deep in the leg, you go out and it pays a hundred bucks and you're like, eh. Are they the only two tracks that do that? Uh Turfway does four or five. Oh, that yeah, you might be you're probably right. I don't I don't ever play Turfway, except mm -hmm. on Jeff Ruby Day I was there, I played it, but I think I was two out of five. Nah. No, they don't pay for that. Mm -mm. No oh. participation trophies, oh. two out of five. No, not for two. All right, uh, that's uh, David Levitch, uh, busy man this time of year. Plenty of action. I'm going to be busy, too, uh, hopefully picking some winners. Good luck this weekend.